So another parable, uh, don't forget to like, subscribe, thumbs up, because today we're going to talk about the strong man. Now, a lot of people will read the strong man and they're like, wow. What does he what does he mean by bind? Why are they gonna bind him? Why are you gonna go first off, why are you gonna go into a strong man's house and then try to bind him? Oh wait a second, you can't get in to the strong man's house without first binding him. Well then how do you actually bind him? What do you wait? You wait, 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 wait a second. You're gonna wait for the strong man outside and you're gonna tie him up, hog tie him, and then go into his house. That's not what this is about. This is very specific, and this actually relates to like a mafia business with regards to knowing the Torah. And you're like, okay, well, what do you mean by mafia business? Well, first off, you have to make the person unclean according to the Torah. And you're like, how do I do that? And what a lot of people don't know is that like, you're not going to understand how this operates unless you've been involved with this. So... The strong man, obviously, would be somebody like shooting him with an arrow outside or something like that or trapping him somewhere. You know, they're, they're not they're not thinking about like keeping the strong man distracted at maybe like a party or festival and then going into his house and plundering all his goods. No, that's not what it's about. It's about how this guy operates his house and he can't be manipulated and he can't be brought down. And he can't be told what to do unless he's bound or his armor is taken away. And obviously, there's a focus here within these Gospels on what is uh, to be plundered. Obviously, vessels. If you notice in Mark, Mark 3.27 is discussed as vessels. Why vessels? Well, I mean, it depends on your view as vessels. Maybe they're back in the day, vessels were valuable. Or there were like, or maybe people plundered other things like showbread. Anyways, they, uh, but he, but this is very specific and it talks about binding. First, tie up the strong one. What, what what do they mean exactly by being able to tie up a strong one? And who is this strong one? Why do you need to tie up a, a person? Do you think a strong man's going to just be tied up on his own? No, you have to get him to tie himself up. Now, uh, uh, what a lot of people don't understand is that... Uh, there's, there's different views on binding. So you'll have people that are uh, ultra-Orthodox and there's this tefillin and it's called, uh, and it's dead binding. It's dead leather. Obviously, it'd be an example would be somebody like wrapping themselves up with dead leather. Now, why? Because once they've agreed that they can't uh, go against the Ten Commandments, they can't lie, all this other stuff. They have to try to keep their word as much as they can. When they're bound, they can be influenced. They're not clean anymore. So the strong one wouldn't be strong anymore once he's bound. He'd be, and especially if, if it's tzitzit that he's wearing, he'd be under the law. And there's so many requirements once he's under this law that it becomes easy for somebody to come in there and plunder his house. Especially if he's not keeping to a certain shamo. Which is what it's all about. It's, it's taking items from a spiritually fallen individual that has tasted death or submitted to a process that's just used to, to I don't want to say rob people, but... It, the process is kind of like that because obviously if you look at Thomas, you're like, you can't do him violence without first binding. Well then why, why do people want to tie a guy up to do violence to him? Obviously if Thomas talked about this and is talked about in the gospel of Thomas about throwing a great sword through a, a, a house, 
How can it, how can you go into the strong man's house? So not able to even enter until a strong man is bound. Think about this deeply. I'll do some more videos on this and updates.